Hello class! This lesson is 4.3, Gravitational Potential Energy. So our first topic here is, what is potential energy? Potential energy is energy that is stored in an object that can be that can be converted into other types of energy. That's what potential energy is. It's this stored energy. Something that's there, but it's not actually doing anything yet. And that combines with what we talked about before, our kinetic energy, when we talk about kinetic and potential together, that is mechanical energy. Mechanical energy is the sum of an object's kinetic and potential energy. We combine those two types of things, kinetic and potential, we combine that to, say, the total mechanical energy of an object. Great. So we've got kinetic energy, potential energy, there's a few different types of potential energy. The one we're focusing on in this lesson is gravitational potential energy. Now our symbol for gravitational potential energy, that's Eg, and this is the stored energy due to an object's position and generally when we talk about this it's an object's height above the ground and the applied gravitational force It's a stored energy that's stored, um, it's storing all this gravity, the force due to gravity. It's, it's um, our potential energy from gravity. We have an equation for it. Now, you've seen this before. You've seen gravitational potential energy in grade 11. So our equation, you might remember, looks like this. I'm writing it a bit different from how you saw it in grade 11. Delta Eg is equal to mg delta y. You might have seen something different. You might have seen Eg equals mgh. We're going to write it this way. Now, I'm writing it as a delta, delta Eg. That means this is a change in gravitational potential. the change, because we're using a delta. And we do that because we, um, we don't really talk about some zero point where something has no gravitational point. We're going to say there is no zero point. There is no zero point. Instead, we talk about the change in gravitational potential. So when something goes up 10 meters, it gains some amount of uh, gravitational potential energy. We always have to look at the relative potential. All right, we've got just two quick problems. Again, these are uh, concepts that you saw in grade 11, so just this is mostly a refresher, this lesson. Um, the first problem says a hiker stands near the edge of a cliff and accidentally drops a rock of mass 1.2 kilograms to the ground at the base of the cliff 28 meters below. Calculate the potential energy of the rock relative to the ground just before the hiker drops it. Okay, well we'll use our equation delta Eg is equal to mg delta y. Delta y, it goes down or uh, in this case, we're talking about the potential energy at the top of the cliff. So delta y 
is 28 meters above the ground, so positive 28 meters. So we can say delta EG, we've got our mass, 1.2 kilograms, times G, 9.8 meters per second squared, times delta Y, 28 meters, and that gives us 3.3 times 10 to the joule, 10 to times 10 to the 2 joules. And that's our gravitational potential. It's really that simple. We'll do another problem using this equation, and then I'll just leave you to do problems num uh, number 1 to 5 on the homework there. So this one says a weightlifter raises a loaded barbell 2.2 meters. The lift increases the gravitational potential energy of the barbell by 490 joules. Determine the mass of the loaded barbell. Okay, again we have delta EG equals MG delta Y. In this case, we are raising at 2.2 meters, and it increases the gravitational potential by 490 joules. So we have delta EG equals 490 joules, and delta Y is equal to 2.2 meters, and we want to find M. So we're going to need to rearrange our equation. We get M is equal to delta EG over G delta Y, and we can plug our numbers in here. 490 over 9.8 times 2.2, and we get a mass of 23 kilograms. And there you go. Nice short lesson for you. Uh, we'll see you in the next one.